Welcome again to the Water Engineering Channel. In today's video, you will learn how water filters in a water treatment plant works and how to calculate head loss in a clean and clogged filter. Let's get started. Before being given to consumers, catchment raw water must be drinkable. Therefore, physical and chemical treatment are needed in order to produce drinking water. The work performed by drinking water treatment facilities varies. The treatment system's implementation must be appropriate for the particular water resource. Water can become contaminated with many natural and artificial substances that change its composition depending on its source, environment, and environment it travels through. Most frequently, either surface water or groundwater is the water that enters the treatment facility. At the water source, an equipment or a superstructure is built to extract water from the source and transport it to the other parts of the water supply system. Here are the two illustrations of intake structures. Please leave a comment below if you'd like me to discuss these structures in my upcoming video. The removal of pollutants such as iron and manganese that groundwater contains is one of the most frequent issues water plants face. In a typical two-stage oxidation filtration process used in groundwater treatment facilities, oxygen, chlorine, or potassium permanganate are initially used to oxidize and precipitate iron and manganese. The water must then be filtered in order to get rid of precipitated particles. Because lakes, rivers, and streams have higher concentrations of debris, bacteria, and pollutants than groundwater does, surface water generally needs more treatment than groundwater. Coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection are the most often used treatment processes for surface water supplies. I will describe the filtration stage in this video. Many waterborne particles are too tiny to be removed by simple sedimentation. Filtration either eliminates precipitated particles and flocks that remain after sedimentation or removes germs and suspended debris from water that has not undergone sedimentation treatment. In fact, filtration was created before Louis Pasteur in France discovered the germ theory. Early in the 1800s, Great Britain saw the construction of the first sand filter beds. Now, let's discuss how the filters are categorized. The following categories of filters can be made based on the media types employed. There are three types of media filters, mono, dual, and mixed. The configuration and media used can help determine the optimal application uses for each filter profile, which have a variety of advantages. All three types are utilized in water treatment, but dual and multimedia filters are gaining popularity. Longer operating times are guaranteed, thanks to the entire bed employed for screening out pollutants. Additionally, they produce potable water of excellent quality and at faster flow rates. Finally, because of how they are made, they can hold more contaminants before needing to be backwashed. The flow through media can also be used to classify filters, such as gravity and pressure filters. The atmosphere can reach gravity filters. Gravity creates the flow in the medium. In the pressure filter, the pressure vessel houses the filter medium. The vessel receives water under pressure. The vessel can either be a cylindrical tank with a horizontal axis or a vertical axis. The rate of filtering can also be used to classify last filters. Flow rates for quicksand filters are typically around 0.1 meters per hour, but can go as high as 0.4 meters per hour. While a quicksand filter can be predicted to produce a flow of 4 to 21 meters per hour. The media is the first part of the filter. Effective size and uniformity coefficient are the two most often used criteria to describe the filter medium. To determine these two key characteristics, Sieve analysis is used. The sieve opening in millimeters that allows 10% of the medium's weight to be determined by sieve analysis is the effective size. Sand with a typical effective size of 0.35 to 0.6 millimeters is used in quicksand filters. The uniformity of filter media is specified by uniformity coefficient. 
The ratio of the sieve size that passes 60% by weight to the sieve size that passes 60% by weight 10%. As uniformity increases, small particles filling the crevices between larger particles promotes blockage. The performance of filtration is further influenced by a number of additional filter material features as density, porosity, and form factor. The filter under drain system is the second element. It is used to distribute the backwash water and collect the filtered water. There are various kinds of under drain system. For water treatment, we typically employ a false floor under drain with nozzles. Depending on whether they are designed for water-only backwash or for combined air scour and water backwash, these nozzles might be one of two varieties. Filter nozzle slot sizes range from around 0.2 mm to about 10 mm, which is a wide range. It is required to have a density of nozzles of roughly 50 per meter square of floor in order to prevent the formation of preferential routes in the filtering mass, often known as mud balls. Other equipment such as the water booster pump and the air booster are required to clean the filters in addition to nozzles and filter material. The two operating modes of a filter are filtration and backwashing. In filtering mode, the tank is filled with raw water and a nozzle plate at the bottom ensures that the treated water flows uniformly through the filter material before reaching the customer. When the filter becomes clogged, which results in an increase in head loss across the filter or an excessive rise in turbidity in the filtered water, backwash mode is activated. The air scour assisted backwash is the most popular technique for cleaning filter beds. Air is blown first. When the inlet and output valves are switched, air is forcefully pushed through the nozzles into the tank. The dirty wash water is directed to a sedimentation tank after the air is distributed by the nozzles, and turbulence loosens the particles left on the filter grains. Then water is used to backwash the filter. The tank's bottom pumps rinse water into it, and the nozzle plate uniformly distributes it around the tank. Once the backwash is complete, the intake and outflow valves are turned back on. Detachable deposits are transferred from the tank to a sedimentation tank. Let's take a look at how to determine a filter's head loss. The type of flow affects how clean bed head loss is calculated. Aragon or Rose equations for turbulent flow and Cosine or Rose equations for laminar flow can be used to calculate the head loss or pressure drop when clean water passes through a clean bed filter. However, when a liquid containing suspended solids permeates the medium and the suspended solids are gradually trapped, this affects the medium's properties especially its porosity, which decreases and its pressure drop which empirically increases according to the following type of law. Where sigma is the volume of deposit per unit of filter bed volume and an experimental coefficient. And lastly, backwash, which occurs when water moves through the bed from bottom to top, grain filters are raised. There is sand bed expansion. This equation determines the head loss through an extended bed, which is equal to the buoyant weight of the fluid's dissolved particles. Thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope you enjoyed seeing this video and that it provided the details you were looking for. Please remember to like and share it with your friends if this is the case. Goodbye until later.